you published uh, Living in the Weather of the World in 2017, which was a wonderful story collection. And I wondered at what point in the uh, letting go of that book you begin thinking about and constructing the next book. Um, actually, the next, the, the novel was actually begun in 2012 as a novella called Pulse. And, um, and so it was already, I already had 50 or 60 pages of it. Mm. And then realized as I was doing it that um, the guy, it starts out the guy's, uh, the, his name in the first, in the, no, in the novella was um, Scott McNichol. I've since changed it, but, but, and he was, it says the manager of Shakespeare Theater of Memphis. <laughs> and um, so while I was doing all that, I started getting into Lear again. And, and I remembered a thing I'd seen years ago at Carter Baron Amphitheater in DC, where they had the director of that particular production had Cordelia as deaf and signing her lines and the fool saying them. And it was absurd because, um, I mean, it's one thing to have somebody translating it into American Sign Language um, house right, which was also the case, but to mm -hmm. have one of the actors sign language uh, Cordelia's oh my God. lines and then have the fool have to say them. Uh, the fool's just going to say, the fool just said Cordelia's lines as wow. if there really wasn't any translation going on. Um, or as if the translation was a stunning rendition of Shakespearean English out of sign language. If you know what I mean, it just, it just called up the artificiality of the entire thing. Yeah. Um, so I thought, wonder what that was like from the inside. And I, so I thought, okay, there's a visiting director and he wants to do that. But that was still going to be the novella. And I had another one that I was messing with would be a longer story called Brother, Brother about a, a, a guy whose whole life has fallen apart and his 19 years older brother takes him in and then that brother finds out stuff about the older brother that he never knew. Mm. They never were close. And somehow in 15, 2015, I was in England and um, writing those sentences of the, that story, whatever it was going to be. And I realized that that guy was an actor in the novella and put them two of them together and realized that it was going to be a novel. And now I've got 300 and 25 pages on the damn thing and I'm still a good 100 pages away from finishing it. <laughs> An actress came into it, a woman named Jacqueline, whose father is um, being effaced slowly by um, uh, dementia from a, a stroke, a couple of strokes, mm -hmm. not Alzheimer's. But they have a long, close, loving relationship, a little bit like Josephine Humphreys with her father. Mm. Um, she nursed her father all the way to the end, beautifully, lovingly, and she's such a cool lady. Oh, cool. So this actress is based slightly on Joe, although I haven't said anything to Joe about this yet. I don't know that I ever will. Um, I don't want to. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to make her feel funny or or utilized in that way. But right. the, this character's spirit is very much like Joe's. And then, so how you mentioned this short, you put down the novel to work on a short story. What, what prompted that? My son-in-law came to visit um, with, with Emily and the three kids. And on Christmas, we, we, they were here right up to um, like five days before Christmas, then Christmas, then the week after up to the, the 31st. They left on New Year's Eve in the morning. And uh, we got to talking about something that happened when I was visiting, touring Hello to the Cannibals. It's an old family story. Oh, yeah. oh, I remember it. Adam and I, uh, at 
three o'clock or so in the morning in Tucson, um, jumped a train after dropping everybody off, left a rental car with both doors open and the headlights on and went up to where this train was crossing through the intersection at about the speed of a, of a uh, escalator in a mall mm -hmm. and got up on it and then it picked up speed a little bit and we jumped down and I fell, I tumbled and we fell on one, but hit just soft gravel. So I just had some barked areas on the back of my head. But we've been saying for years, what if there was a rock or a tie there and I hit it? It would, you know, I wouldn't be here. And so this last visit, he kept saying, when are you going to write that story? You know? uh, he falls off the train and is dead. And then what's the son-in-law do from the son-in-law's point of view to go home and tell his wife that they got drunk and ju jumped up on a train. So I started writing the story and all this stuff started coming to me to say, um, you know, it's a writing program. I've never written about a writing program before. So I put in some pretty outrageous um, <laughs> uh, stuff that the, the, it turns out the visiting writer is a famous poet whose uh, newest book of poems called A Faltering Arising mm. uh, has, um, is he's on the fourth city of a, of a, you know, a 32 city tour wow. of this book. And he's got several w awards and a big reputation. He's very acquisitive about it. And there's a passage I'm proud of where it says, that, um, you know, at about this time, um, the guy's name is, uh, is um, uh, Billy, is the, the husband of the wife. He's a young fiction writer. And it says, uh, had the realization that despite his wife's qualities, her father was not a very nice man. And it goes on from there. You know, the guy gets drunk and does all kinds of pisses in the campus fountain and all that stuff at four o'clock in the morning. Oh, God. So, but I haven't finished it yet. And it's it's been sort of the only thing I've been working on for the last, as I say, week, week or so, week and a half. And I've been working all day on it, you know, like eight, nine hours a day on the damn wow. thing, trying to get it right, you know. And I think it's going to end up being a novella. So about, it's already at 30 pages. Wow. Is it typical for you to spend that much time during the day on a piece of fiction? Uh, not really. Not, only when it's toward the end of it, like when I'm finishing uh, Hello to the Cannibals mm -hmm. um, that summer. I was working 18 hour days on it. Um, I was working all day and then sitting up in bed with a laptop and working on it and then sleeping a little. People were bringing me food. Um, I don't recommend living like that. I missed it <laughs> summer, you know. I wrote 450 pages that summer of that book. And I remember saying, uh, you know, if, if I ever say I'm gonna write another historical novel, shoot me, you know, because I was just, that's all I did that whole summer. No kidding. It was like a sick room. Um, in fact, when I came downstairs uh, into the foyer of that house, my daughter Emily ran to the entrance of that foyer and said, is it finished? Because she'd heard oh. me on the stairs for the first time in months. You know? Oh, my gosh. So I don't want to ever do that again. And I'm proud of the novel, but Jesus. But usually it's a couple of hours and then quit, you know. Mm -hmm. do, you hours. Uh, do you find it hard to go from the novel to stories? Not really. Um, I, I feel sometimes, um, I don't know, pressure to get back to the novel because I, you know, I want to keep going. I want to keep the momentum. But at the same time, the story is making a pressure to be written and it feels good. And, you know, I'm going to have something finished before I have to go to the last part of this novel, which is... right. I have the last paragraph of this novel and then huge space between where I am and that last paragraph and I got to figure out some way to get to it, you know. Right, interesting. It'll be interesting. Yeah. You know? um, so. so when you're involved in these various writing projects, how does your reading life inform them or not? What do you Let's see if I can show you. Um, 
Can you stand by? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's great. That's the stack of books where I that I I'm reading those. Oh good. Um, I'm right now. I'm reading Brothers Karamazov and Doctor Zhivago and Appointment in Samara. Wow. Uh, Elizabeth Spencer is a Southern woman, uh, and her The Light in the Piazza and other stories. James D. Houston's A Bird of Another Heaven, The Afterlife, Stories of Updikes. I'm rereading that. John Berryman's Collected Poems. Uh, William Maxwell's So Long, See You Tomorrow, Tim O'Brien's July, July again, because I love Tim's a pal, a dear pal, and Robert Stone's Hall of Mirrors again. So uh, are these books that you're getting something out of in relation to what you're writing, or is it just like where you're at in your reading life? Uh, it's just keeping language running through my head. I found out when I was about 16 or 17 years old, I, I, I played basketball that year, and that's all I did. Hour upon hour of playing basketball. I didn't read anything. Mm -hmm. I found out that when I, was, when I was with walking down the hall with a young woman, I had absolutely nothing to say to her. <laughs> I had no language. Right. I remember saying, did you ever notice how, no kidding, I actually remember saying this. Do you ever notice how when you're walking in a field and a farm, the cow patties form a crust <laughs> when they're drying? And she looked at me like I had palm trees coming out of my head. And I realized that that was, really wasn't a subject for intelligent conversation. And I remember actually having the conscious thought, I need to get some words. I need to, to read more. And this is, I never had any sense I'd ever be a writer. I just... And then the, when I went back to reading, I was reading about sports figures and stuff before that. When I went back, went back to reading, I started reading, um, you know, um, Thomas Merton and St. Francis de Sales and St. Ignatius Loyola because I was going to be a priest. And I read a book by Fulton Sheen that kept talking about Dostoevsky. So I went and read Dostoevsky and then mm -hmm. Kennedy got killed and I read that he had read War and Peace. I went and got War and Peace to emulate Kennedy. And War and Peace led to everything else. You didn't was... mess around. <laughs> <laughs> I've read it five times. Uh, wow. I just finished the fifth time this last year. I'll probably start it again. Um, What's your favorite thing about it? Do you get something different out of it every time? Every time. And the thing is, to me, that's it's the novel that offers the widest, widest range of human feeling from, from mm -hmm. Natasha at her first ball, looking at the white coats and the epaulets on the shoulders. And he says she was at that pitch of happiness where it is impossible to imagine an ungenerous thought in another person. Wow. Uh, you, just, you just realize, my God, I know exactly what that feels like. And, uh, and then a little later, um, talking about the little princess and how this downy upper lip, when she smiled, she, her face was beautiful. And when she frowned or was upset, her face took on the appearance of a vicious little squirrel. Or, or the place where at Borodino, Pierre sees men blown up and has the thought, well, now surely they'll stop. <laughs> I mean, there's just so much in it. That, yeah. uh, I mean, the whole of Russian life is in it. Yeah. You know what Twain said about it? No. Uh, I just love it. Twain said, God, I want someday somebody to say something like this about a book of mine. Twain said, Tolstoy carelessly neglects to include a boat race. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I just, I just love it. It's so yeah. Twain, too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, so you're working on the novel, you're working on the stories. What, do you have anything you'd like to say to new writers who are working on their first novels and stories? Oh, just to, uh, don't expect it to dance, um, too soon. Let it just be what it is and, um, go on and make the mistakes that if you're working, that's good. And that's all you ask yourself. Did I work? It'll take care of itself if you keep going with it. You don't have to have, um, really, you don't have to have much of any idea what the whole thing is going to look like. You just go for each day's work, you know. And at the end of the day, if 
you can say, you know, the question, did I work? If the answer is yes, no other questions. And uh, Hemingway's great old advice that I've followed since I started, which is when you quit, try to work to a place where you know what the next scene is when you quit. So you don't have to be facing that tundra of the empty page, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's great advice. Yeah.